Hello, my name is Igor and welcome back to my tech farm. A few months ago, I tested a RevoPoint mini CD scanner and I uh, already mentioned there that its real power is using it with a turntable. And it is great for scan uh, miniatures, small parts. Uh, for human face, uh, it is not so comfortable because it is uh, not so good to use it from the hand and uh, also that the blue light is not good for the eyes. Uh, by the way, some rumors I got uh, that uh, soon we will point will launch a new scanner on a Kickstarter and it can scan a wider range and we can use it to scan humans too. That's all the information I have, but uh, let's back to this uh, Revo Point Mini. So the biggest power is using with a turntable, but we have sometimes the objects we cannot be scanned only from one uh, position because there are some surfaces which cannot be visible from this angle even if it rotates. So what options we have? We can uh, rotate the object so we can do one pass, rotate it and do the second pass. And the software will automatically recognize this new position and align two scannings and uh, align those two points. Uh, in most cases th this works, if not we can do this manually, but in that case the accuracy is not so great of course. Uh, the second method we have, uh, we can um, move the position of the scanner, so we can do one pass in let's say uh, this position and we, then we can move the position of the scanner and do the second pass. And with this uh, it can use these uh, marking points on the turntable and the accuracy will be, be of course uh, bigger. And now we have a third method and that's with this uh, two axis turntable which is in this box. At this moment, I'm not sure about its advantage, but uh, this uh, two-axis turntable can, of course, rotate like the old one, but it can also tilt plus minus 30 degrees. And if the software uses this information, in that case, uh, we can get m even more accurate scanning because uh, by moving the position of the scanner, the software don't really know the new position of the scanner, so it only relies on the marking points of, on the turntable. So I believe with this method we can have more accurate uh, scanning. Uh, of course, uh, probably we have some disadvantage that uh, uh, 30 degrees, but we must have a stable contact, enough friction, otherwise the object will move from the surface. Maybe we can stick it with two-sided stick tape temporarily, but uh, we will see. Let's see what's in the box. So we have this rotating turntable with marking points and I can see uh, four places for the screws. I'm not sure what are they used for. At first I thought it is one quarter, you know, standard camera thread. But it doesn't really go in. Then I tried with M6 volt. It's in a little bit loose, but definitely it can be used with M6. A proper way it is for fixing bigger objects during the tilting. And of course it can tilt around this axis plus minus 30 degrees. And we have this warning sticker, so don't put your hand between these two elements. Mm -hmm. And we also have this uh, power supply unit. And I have to change, in my case, I have to use this one. The new power adapter has the output of 12 volts and 2 amperes, until the old one for the old turntable has also the output of 12 volts, but only 1 amp. So you cannot use this power adapter with the new turntable. I'm connecting the power cable. And until this LED is blinking, it is ready for the pairing. Okay, the next step is opening the Revo scan and it will ask for the firmware update of the Mini. Firmware update is in progress. After approximately 0 4 minutes, the firmware is updated and now the scanner is restarting. There is an icon for the turntable and uh, search, uh, you can see it already, okay, add, connect. And I can see it is connected because this LED is constantly green, it doesn't blink anymore. Here are the settings for the automatic control and the manual control. Okay, let's see, we can set the speed of the rotation around the z-axis, and here we can have uh, x-axis angles, so uh, we can have up to five rotations. And currently by default it is set to serial rotation, the first one on zero degree tilt, then on plus and then a uh, third one on minus 15. So let's say if you want only two rotations, uh, then I can disable one and I can change even the angle here if I want to, let's say to 20 degrees. And if you need a preview, we can go to the manual control and here we can start the rotation or the tilting to check the position of the camera. 
and it's time to start with the scanning. First one will be in features using the dual axis turntable. Okay, and here I will try three passes, but uh, plus and minus 29 degrees is the maximum, which allows me here in settings. And first attempt was failed scan because uh, something happened which I actually predicted. After one rotation, it started with the tilting. Double sided stick tape. And now let's repeat this scan with the plus and minus maximal 30 degrees. This time everything was smooth. This is the first rotation after tilting the second rotation and another tilting and the third pass. And now a few practical advices which I figured out. So uh, position this turntable that this uh, tilting axis is parallel with the scanner. Second thing, pay attention that on the biggest tilting angle the scanner is never below this plane. So if this is the maximum tilting angle, the scanner should be at least on this level here. So in that case I have to raise its position. Analyzing the result with the scanning with this uh, two axis turntable, uh, the result is great of course, but uh, I think uh, the result is very similar like with the repositioning of the scanner. Uh, the only advantage I can see that it could do the scanning even in very low angle where it doesn't have good view to the marking points. The same stick tape is still here and I hope it will hold this benchy. And this object will also be scanned in three passes and here I noticed that problem that uh, during the tilting it is out of the frame. I will talk about this in the conclusions. And this is the point cloud and after click on meshing I will get uh, these surfaces. Really a lot of details even from the inside. And of course from outside too. Not perfect but uh, very nice benchy. And I decided to import it into Prusa Slicer. But first always I have to rotate it for some reason. And I always like to cut maybe half millimeters from the bottom to get flat surface. And side by side here you can see the original benchy. I have this error message in the Prusa Slicer. The reason for that is that I forgot to check the closing of the surfaces in the Revo scan. This will be my next test object. Uh, only the scanning is not good on this black and interesting on this yellow surface. So I will use this uh, vanishing spray on it. And again, three passes scanning. This is the first one, the second one, and the third one on maximal tilting angle. And this is a raw data from three passes scanning. And they're not perfectly aligned. Of course, they will be later after fusing. But uh, if it would use the information from the position of the turntable, I believe that uh, this rough data would be much better. Of course, uh, here you can see after aligning these points, this is the point cloud, which looks great now. And of course, when I click the meshing, this is the final surface, which is actually great. A lot of details I can see on this object. It is also in the scanned part too. This Barbie show will be my next scanning object and it is approximately 20 millimeters long. Now this object is a little bit shinier and also it has those four pink lines. Uh, with this theoretically I should use that uh, spray but I was curious uh, how it looks like as it is now. The final result is not really perfect, definitely I should use the spray with this. But even now I got a lot of details but I can still for example position of those four pink lines. And my last scanning for this video, another Barbie equipment. But uh, with this scanning I want to check uh, if the scanner is using the information from the tilt. Because I think it doesn't. I will scan this boot in two passes. Uh, the second pass will be on 15 degree angle. But I will also change the position of the scanner. And if the Revo scan doesn't recognize this change, so it just uh, put together those points. In that case it is obvious that it doesn't use the information from the tilt angle. So two passes, first is on 0 degrees and the second will be on 10 degrees. After the first rotation, during the tilting I'm changing the position of the scanner too. And I'm curious if it will be noticed. And then I will let it to finish the scanning and I will check the results. But as you can see the scanning was successful, so this is quite obvious to me that uh, it doesn't use the information from the tilting angle. It's a pity because it could result a much more accurate scanning.
And my final thoughts, I really like the idea about 2-axis turntable, but I thought it will use the information about its position during the scanning, but it doesn't. I mean, this is great scanner and its accuracy is the best I tested so far for miniatures, but I believe its accuracy would be even better if it, the software would, let's say, take a scan every exactly 10 degree rotation angle. And also it would use the angle from the tilting. But it doesn't, and with this it lost its advantage compared to that method where I am changing the position and the angle of the scanner between two passes. Also it would be good to see the markings, which is the plus and which is the minus tilting angle, but this can be easily fixed by marking myself. Uh, but uh, another issue I have with uh, this uh, two axis turntable is the position of the tilting axis. It is 50 millimeters below this surface. Now, why is this a problem? Uh, this uh, Revo Point Mini is great for miniatures and it has very small uh, view angle. And let's say uh, I want to scan this bench. It is very near to the maximal size where I can scan it with the excellent distance. If I need a bigger object, I have to go a little bit back, and in that case, I will uh, get a good distance. But even more uh, back, I will get a warning that uh, I'm too far. Okay, let's say I find the correct frame for this benchy, but uh, when I do the rotation, since the tilting axis is not through the center of the object, it will go out to the frame during the tilting. It can be solved easily by just a little bit repositioning of the angle on the CD scanner, but again, we are lo losing that uh, comfortable usage of two axis turntable. So perfect would be if this uh, rotation tilting angle would be exactly approximately here, 20 millimeters above this surface. Of course, completely different design has to be, and sometimes it may be in the way of bigger object, but uh, that would be the perfect position for this tilting angle. If you already have a single axis turntable, I really don't see the reason why should you buy the two axis version, because uh, with just repositioning of the scanner, you can get the similar results. Well, of course, with this turntable, we can get a higher scanning angles. So let's say we want to scan something inside without need it for the bigger or different tripod. If you uh, buy a mini without turntable, well, definitely you are losing the biggest advantage of this Revos uh, mini scanner. And I will recommend everybody to use this only with the turntable. And in that case, you should buy this uh, two axis version because basically it works great and it is much more comfortable for the using. If you have some additional experience with two axis turntable, or, or maybe I missed something in my review, but I try to give you my honest uh, review based on facts mostly, you know, a few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy 3D scanning. Bye.